Barbara Stanwyck was a talented actress known for her strong and independent roles in film and television. She had a career that spanned over 60 years, and her ability to adapt to various genres made her a favorite among audiences and critics alike. What do you think made Barbara Stanwyck unique compared to other actors of her time? Are there any interesting stories or lesser known facts about her that you find particularly captivating? We'd also love to hear about your most memorable moments related to Barbara Stanwyck. Your stories and memories are valuable to us, so please share them in the comments. Stay tuned, as we have many surprising, amusing, and touching facts about Barbara Stanwyck to share with you. Barbara Stanwyck was a prominent actress with a career spanning over four decades. She is known for her strong performances in both film and television. Her filmography includes over 80 films. Notable among these are Stella Dallas, for which she received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress, Double Indemnity, where she played the role of a femme fatale, and The Lady Eve, where her comedic talent shone. For those new to her work, Double Indemnity is often recommended as it showcases her range as an actress and is a classic example of film noir. Additionally, Ball of Fire and Sorry, Wrong Number are also highly regarded and display her versatility on screen. These films are considered essential viewing for fans and newcomers alike to appreciate the talent of Barbara Stanwyck. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Thelma Jordan in the file on Thelma Jordan was memorable enough to be adapted for radio. She and Wendell Corey brought their roles to life once again for the Screen Director's Playhouse broadcast in 1951. Despite her success, Stanwyck chose not to take the role of Angela Channing in the television series Falcon Crest in 1981. Years later, she was reunited with Linda Evans on screen, a notable pairing since their last appearance together in the Big Valley as mother and daughter Victoria and Audra Barkley, respectively. This reunion was special as it happened after 16 years apart, bringing back memories of their earlier work together. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Julia O. Treadway in Executive Suite showcased her acting alongside a stellar cast of four Oscar winners and four nominees. Her role as Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity was notable, with her blonde wig becoming a topic of conversation. Despite the star-studded cast and executive suite, Stanwyck's filming was completed in less than a week, demonstrating her efficiency and skill in her craft. Barbara Stanwyck brought to life the character of Sugar Puss O'Shea in the film Ball of Fire. Her performance was later adapted for radio, where she reprised the role alongside Fred McMurray for Lux Radio Theater, and then again for Hallmark Playhouse with Franchot Tone and Wendy Berry. In Babyface, she portrayed Lily Powers, a character who ironically references herself as a ball of fire, connecting back to her earlier role. Stanwyck's portrayal of Lorna Moon in Golden Boy marked another collaboration with Adolf Menju, with whom she had worked in Forbidden. Their cinematic partnership concluded with To Please a Lady. Stanwyck's roles in these films showcased her ability to capture diverse characters, leaving a lasting impression on the silver screen. Barbara Stanwyck showed her supportive nature on the set of Titanic, where she assisted fellow actress Audrey Dalton during a long shot. To address the visual imbalance caused by their differing body shapes, Stanwyck cleverly positioned her arm around Dalton, allowing them to walk off screen gracefully. In Remember the Night, Stanwyck's character, Lee Leander, uses the alias Mary Smith, a nod to the lead in Easy Living, another film by writer Preston Sturges. For Ball of Fire, it was actor Gary Cooper who suggested Stanwyck for the role of the quick-witted Catherine Sugarpuss O'Shea, showcasing her ability to capture dynamic characters on screen. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Leona Stevenson in Sorry, wrong number was so intense that she believed it caused her hair to turn gray prematurely. Her generosity extended to her colleagues, especially the younger ones. Marilyn Monroe, her co-star in Clash by Night, spoke highly of Stanwyck's kindness, a rare trait among the established stars of that era. In Double Indemnity, Stanwyck's character, Phyllis Dietrichson, is remembered for the distinctive blonde wig she wore. This was initially suggested by the director, Billy Wilder, who later admitted to regretting the choice due to its appearance. However, he justified the decision in subsequent interviews, claiming it was deliberate. Barbara Stanwyck faced a frightening ordeal when a burglar broke into her home, assaulting her and stealing jewels. Despite the trauma, she recovered quickly, only to endure the loss of her house to a fire years later, along with irreplaceable personal items. 
Her career, however, was marked by memorable roles such as Stella Dallas, which was adapted for radio, and Molly Monaghan in Union Pacific, showcasing her repeated successful pairings with actor Joel McCrea. Barbara Stanwyck's role as Lee Leander in Remember the Night led to a significant connection with Preston Sturges, who frequented the set. Their friendship resulted in a promise from Sturges to create a film specifically for her, which materialized as The Lady Eve in 1941. In another role, Stanwyck portrayed Megan in The Bitter Tea of General Yen, which was based on a novel by Grace Zaring Stone. Stone, along with her family, visited the set, and although impressed by the set's realism, felt the casting didn't fit particularly Stanwyck's role as Megan. From a young age, Stanwyck was self-reliant, working from the age of 14. Her dedication to her career was so intense that Jacques Turner, a film director, observed that her life revolved around her work, which was her primary focus. Frank Fay, known for his difficult personality in Hollywood, saw his career decline as Barbara Stanwyck's acting career soared. Their marriage ended in 1935, and while Faye struggled, Stanwyck became a celebrated actress. She starred as Lee Leander in Remember the Night, where a memorable line from the film connects to Sherlock Holmes' adventures. In The Strange Love of Martha Ivers, despite being the leading actress, Stanwyck's character is absent for the first part of the film, making her appearance all the more significant when she finally steps into the story. Barbara Stanwyck, recognized as one of the greatest screen legends, ranked 11th by the American Film Institute. Her role as Mary Carson in The Thornbirds was challenging as she battled bronchitis on top of her existing emphysema during the shoot. Despite health struggles, she delivered a memorable performance. Throughout her career, Stanwyck appeared in nine films with Lady or Ladies in the title, yet it wasn't until later years that she began portraying more aristocratic characters. Her evolution as an actress showed her ability to adapt and excel in various roles, reflecting her dedication to her craft. Barbara Stanwyck's career was honored with the American Film Institute Life Achievement Award in 1987, recognizing her as a leading figure in the industry. Her role as Victoria Barclay in The Big Valley was more than just acting. It fostered a real-life bond with co-star Linda Evans, who spent every Saturday at Stanwyck's home rehearsing, leading to a mother-daughter relationship between them. Stanwyck's talent was undeniable to Cecil B. DeMille, who, after considering other actresses, cast her as Molly Monaghan in Union Pacific. Her performance not only won DeMille's admiration, but also contributed to the film's historic win of the first Palme d'Or Award, setting a high standard in cinema. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Elizabeth Lane in Christmas in Connecticut showcased her ability to captivate audiences even with budget constraints. The film, made during a period when studio head Jack L. Warner emphasized frugality, cleverly reused a luxurious mink coat that Joan Crawford had worn in Mildred Pierce. In Ball of Fire, Stanwyck stepped into the role of Sugar Puss O'Shea, a part initially sought by Lucille Ball, who believed it could lead to an Oscar win. However, producer Samuel Goldwyn chose Stanwyck for the role once she became available. Her performance as Julia Sturges in Titanic further solidified her status as a leading lady, and her co-star Audrey Dalton, who played Annette Sturges, would later join Stanwyck in the television series The Big Valley. Stanwyck's ability to adapt to different roles and settings made her a reliable choice for filmmakers and a favorite among viewers. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity set a standard for the femme fatale role in film noir. Her appearance in a towel, followed by a white dress, became a memorable image of allure and mystery similar to Lana Turner's striking presence in The Postman Always Rings Twice. Beyond her impact in film noir, Stanwyck's contributions to the Western genre were recognized when she was honored by the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in 1973. Her versatility as an actress was further acknowledged in Stephen Silverman's 1999 book Funny Ladies, highlighting her ability to cross genres and captivate audiences with her performances. Barbara Stanwyck's dedication to her roles was evident in her portrayal of Stella Dallas, where she embraced a significant physical change, aging by decades. She took the rare step of bleaching her hair, preferring authenticity over the ease of wearing wigs. Her commitment extended to her appearance, with deliberately chosen costumes and added padding to fit the character's evolution. In contrast to her character's glamorous image, Stanwyck's beginnings were humble, starting in the raw and lively world of vaudeville and burlesque far from the glitz of showgirls. 
Her legacy was honored in 2013 at New York City's Film Forum, showcasing 40 films from her impressive 35-year career, a testament to her lasting influence in the film industry. Barbara Stanwyck's role as Lorna Moon in Golden Boy was a pivotal moment in her career and for the film's lead, William Holden. Despite the competition from thousands of actors, Stanwyck saw potential in Holden and, along with director Robin Mamoulian, supported his casting. Her portrayal of Stella Dallas in Stella Dallas showcased her ability to bring depth to her characters, sharing the screen with her real-life brother Burt Stevens. In Ball of Fire, Stanwyck brought the character Sugar Puss Oshi to life, displaying her range and talent, which she would again pair with S.Z. Seikal in the holiday favorite Christmas in Connecticut. These roles highlight Stanwyck's significant contributions to cinema during her illustrious career. Barbara Stanwyck's dedication to her roles extended beyond the screen. While portraying Jean in The Lady Eve, she and co-star Henry Fonda chose to stay on set with director Preston Sturges. Together, they immersed themselves in the creative process, often revising their lines to perfect their performances. In Ball of Fire, her character Sugar Puss O'Shea's musical number Drum Boogie was voiced by singer Martha Tilton, showcasing a collaboration that brought the character to life through song. To her role as Maggie Morgan in Roustabout, the setting was a real carnival, Kraft's 20 big shows, which provided an authentic backdrop to her performance, reflecting the genuine atmosphere of the carnival life. Barbara Stanwyck brought to life the character of Lily Powers in Babyface, showcasing her acting skills at the young age of 25 and celebrating her 26th birthday shortly after the film's release. Her portrayal of Martha Ivers in The Strange Love of Martha Ivers was so compelling that it was adapted for a radio broadcast in 1950, where she once again took on the role, bringing the same depth to the audio performance. And remember the night. Despite initial hesitation due to concerns about her ability to convincingly portray a character with nimble fingers, Stanwyck accepted the role of Lee Leander after being assured that hand doubles could be used if necessary, demonstrating her commitment to her craft. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Jesse Bourne in East Side, West Side was met with admiration from director Mervyn Leroy, who praised her kindness towards all members of the shooting crew. Her role as Lorna Moon in Golden Boy was significant enough that, upon receiving her Honorary Academy Award years later, she dedicated the moment to her late co-star William Holden. In Sorry Wrong Number, where she played Leona Stevenson, Stanwyck faced the challenge of conveying terror while confined to a bed, relying solely on her voice and expressions. She tackled this by filming her scenes in chronological order, a method she believed would best capture her character's escalating fear. This approach was a testament to her dedication to her craft, ensuring that the emotional intensity of her performance was both authentic and sustained throughout the filming process. Barbara Stanwyck reprised her role as Lee Leander in a radio adaptation of Remember the Night alongside Fred McMurray, which aired in 1940. She was known for her generosity on set, exemplified by sharing designer dresses with her on-screen daughter Linda Evans in the Big Valley. Additionally, Robert Wagner, an actor significantly younger than Stanwyck, revealed a personal relationship with her that spanned four years. Stanwyck's actions both on and off the screen showed her personal warmth and professional dedication. Barbara Stanwyck brought a personal touch to her role as Leona Stevenson in Sorry Wrong Number using her own jewel class cigarette case in the film. This case was not just a prop, it was a birthday present from her close friend Joan Crawford. And another aspect of her life, a comprehensive biography by Victoria Wilson, spanning a thousand pages, delves into Stanwyck's journey but only covers up to her early 30s. This extensive work is just the beginning of her story. Stanwyck's collaboration with Fred McMurray began with Remember the Night, marking the first of four films they did together. Their on-screen partnership continued with memorable movies like Double Indemnity, The Moonlighter, and There's Always Tomorrow, showcasing their dynamic chemistry over the years. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity was so memorable that she returned to the role for a radio adaptation on the Screen Guild Theater in 1945 alongside Fred McMurray. Her talent shone through in television as well, where she played Victoria Barkley in The Big Valley. 
Her performance was outstanding, earning her an Emmy nomination for each of the show's first three seasons and winning the award for her first nomination. The legacy of her character in Double Indemnity is preserved not just in film history, but also physically as the house at 6301 Quebec Drive, used as her character's home, is still standing. Barbara Stanwyck portrayed a range of characters with skill and authenticity. In Stella Dallas, she convincingly played the mother of Anne Shirley, despite being only 11 years her senior. Her role as Sugar Puss or She in Ball of Fire showcased her ability to captivate, especially in a scene where cinematographer Greg Tolan used black grease paint to emphasize her expressive eyes. In Christmas in Connecticut, she played Elizabeth Lane and humorously referred to herself as her boss Charlie McCarthy, a nod to the famous ventriloquist act of Edgar Bergen, Candace Bergen's father. Stanwyck's performances were marked by her adaptability and the unique presence she brought to each role. Barbara Stanwyck's role as Martha Ivers and the strange love of Martha Ivers brought tension behind the scenes. Initially upset over equal billing with Elizabeth Scott, Stanwyck later showed warmth towards Scott, expressing enjoyment and working together. In a darker association, her character in The Lady Gambles was mentioned by Howard Unruh, a man who committed a tragic crime after watching the film. Lastly, Stanwyck's portrayal of Lee Leander in Remember the Night was revived on radio, showcasing her ability to captivate audiences across different media. Her career touched many from co-stars to audiences, leaving a lasting impression. Barbara Stanwyck took on the role of Megan in The Bitter Tea of General Yin, enduring a grueling schedule that included two weeks of night shoots. Both she and co-star Nils Esther found it challenging to adapt to the nocturnal routine, unlike Walter Connolly who thrived in it. Her portrayal of Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity earned critical acclaim, securing a spot on the American Film Institute's list of top screen characters and performances. Despite this success, her time as Constance Colby in The Colbys was less favorable. The series faced ridicule, and Stanwyck herself did not shy away from criticizing the show, openly expressing her disappointment with its quality. Barbara Stanwyck brought to life the character of Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity, not just on the silver screen, but also on the radio. The Screen Guild Theater aired a condensed version of the film where she reprised her role, capturing the essence of the character in a 30-minute segment. Her talent shone through in another performance as Jean and the Lady Eve during a Lux radio theater broadcast where she and Charles Coburn delivered their original roles over the airwaves. Meanwhile, Edward G. Robinson, who played a key part in Double Indemnity, overcame his initial hesitation about being the third lead by recognizing the value in less screen time for equal pay alongside Stanwyck and Fred McMurray. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Lily Powers in Babyface marked a significant period in her life, coinciding with personal milestones such as adopting a son. Her role as Constance Colby in The Colbys highlighted the age gap between her and her on-screen siblings Charlton Heston and Michael Parks, which was notable but did not affect their dynamic on the show. In Golden Boy, her character Lorna Moon allowed her to work alongside William Holden, setting the stage for their later collaboration in Executive Suite, which would be their last film together. Stanwyck's career was characterized by these diverse roles that showcased her adaptability and talent in the film industry. Barbara Stanwyck played a pivotal role in William Holden's early career. Despite initial doubts about his suitability for the lead in Golden Boy, her support convinced the producers to cast him, which propelled him to stardom. Years later, Holden expressed his gratitude to Stanwyck during an Academy Award ceremony, leading to an emotional moment between the two. In her own career, Stanwyck delivered a powerful performance as Leona Stevenson in Sorry Wrong Number, with director Anatole Litvak filming her scenes in a demanding two-week schedule. Her portrayal of Sugar Puss Oshi in Ball of Fire showcased her talent, although her salary for the film was significantly lower than that of her co-star Gary Cooper, highlighting the pay disparities of the time. Barbara Stanwyck, known for her strong screen presence, shared a personal connection with the entertainment industry beyond her own acting career. But she was the sister of actor Burt Stevens and had family ties to the industry through her sister-in-law, actress Carl Lincoln. In her personal life, she played a nurturing role as the godmother of Bobby Polderus. Before her rise to fame, Stanwyck graced the fashion world, working briefly as a model in the late 1920s. 
Her versatility as an actress was evident in her portrayal of Joan Booth in The Lady Gambles, and she showcased her talent in the similarly titled but unrelated film Gambling Lady in 1934. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Molly Monaghan in Union Pacific was a significant event celebrated with a grand premiere in Omaha, Nebraska. The city's population doubled as 250,000 people attended the three-day event. The National Guard was called in to manage the crowds. A special train journey from Hollywood to Omaha, with stars including Stanwyck and Joel McCrea, took three days, attracting large crowds at each stop. The film premiered in three theaters at once, with President Franklin D. Roosevelt initiating the event from Washington, D.C. The premiere was advertised as the largest in film history, featuring parades and a banquet. Following this, an antique train toured the country for 15 days, visiting 30 cities. Despite rumors in February 1955 linking her to gunfight at the OK Corral, Stanwyck did not appear in the film. However, her role as Mee Doyle in Clash by Night stands out in her career. She was offered the part after Joan Crawford declined it, and despite being the second choice, her performance is highly regarded and remains a highlight of her acting career. Barbara Stanwyck's film career was celebrated during the Turner Classic Movies Summer Under the Stars Festival on August 1, 2020, highlighting her significant role in cinema. Her intended return to television in Heat of Anger was altered when Susan Hayward took over the role that would lead to the series Fitzgerald and Pride. Reflecting on her portrayal of Stella Dallas, director King Vidor, and Stanwyck shared a professional bond that streamlined their collaboration with Vidor expressing a heartfelt connection and Stanwyck focusing on their mutual dedication to their work. Barbara Stanwyck's marriage to Frank Fay was troubled and ended in a dramatic split. Their adopted son Dion was at the center of a bitter incident that led to their divorce. The relationship between Stanwyck and Dion soured over the years, culminating in a permanent estrangement. Despite a troubled life, Dion inherited from Stanwyck's estate with the stipulation of silence about their relationship. Stanwyck found solace in her friendship with Joan Crawford, often seeking refuge at Crawford's home during her tumultuous marriage. Their bond, formed during their early acting careers, lasted a lifetime. In her role as Leona Stevenson in Sorry, Wrong Number, Stanwyck delivered a performance that turned the confines of her on-screen apartment into a visual metaphor for her character's entrapment, showcasing the effective use of setting and lighting by cinematographer Saul Polito. Barbara Stanwyck delivered a memorable performance as Julia O. Treadway in the film Executive Suite, showcasing her strong screen presence. This role came years after her collaboration with William Holden and Golden Boy, which marked Holden's first significant part in cinema. In Sorry, Wrong Number, Stanwyck portrayed Leona Stevenson, a role that demanded intense emotional investment. She described the challenge of maintaining such high emotions throughout the filming week, only to decompress over the weekend and the difficulty of reigniting those feelings each Monday. Despite her powerful performances, Barbara Stanwyck is often remembered as a talented actress who, surprisingly, never received an Oscar. Her work continues to be admired for its authenticity and emotional depth. Barbara Stanwyck's role as Lee Leander in Remember the Night is a testament to her professional work ethic. The film finished well ahead of schedule and saved a significant amount of money thanks to her efficiency. Her career was highlighted in a collection of essays on Western film and television actors showing her significance in the genre. Additionally, her connection with John Forsyth brought many notable actors to share the screen with her showcasing her respected status among peers in the industry. Barbara Stanwyck's performance in Union Pacific was a standout moment in her career, leading to her receiving the prestigious Sassel B. DeMille Award many years later. Her heartfelt gratitude was expressed in her speech, acknowledging her work with Charlton Heston and the honor of receiving an award named after a director she admired. Her role as Leona Stevenson in Sorry, Wrong Number earned her the last of four Oscar nominations, and although she didn't win, she was later recognized with an honorary award for her contributions to film. In The Lady Eve, she brought to life the character of Jean, a role written for her by Preston Sturges, who saw her talent and promised her a memorable film. These roles not only highlight her skill as an actress, but also her significant presence in classic Hollywood cinema. Barbara Stanwyck's performance in Double Indemnity was a standout, earning the film a nomination for Best Picture in 1944. She also played a key role in Union Pacific, recognized at the Cannes Film Festival with the first Palme d'Or Award. 
Her career reflected a story similar to A Star is Born, where Janet Gaynor's character's success mirrors Stanwyck's own rise in Hollywood. In the film Titanic, she portrayed Julia Sturges, and interestingly, her co-star Burt Stevens, who appeared as a passenger, was her brother in real life. Stanwyck's work continues to be celebrated for these memorable roles and her significant contributions to cinema. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Megan in The Bitter Tea of General Yen showcases the film's boldness for its time. The silent communication between Megan, Ma Lai, and Yen conveys complex emotions and a shift in relationships without a single word. In The Thornbirds, despite Bette Davis's interest in the role of Mary Carson, it was Barbara Stanwyck who brought the character to life. Her performance as Vance Jeffords in The Furies stands out in a cast that includes highly acclaimed actors, highlighting her ability to hold her own among the best. Each role demonstrates her skill in embodying diverse characters, leaving a lasting impression on the audience. Barbara Stanwyck's role as Lorna Moon in Golden Boy was pivotal not only for the film, but also for William Holden's career. Her support for Holden's casting in the 1939 movie was so appreciated that he expressed his gratitude by sending her flowers yearly to commemorate their work together. In another instance of her supportive nature, during her Golden Globe speech for the Thorn Birds, Stanwyck chose to use her time to commend Anne Margaret for her performance in Who Will Love My Children, rather than focusing solely on her own achievement. This act of kindness was highlighted by the media and was seen as characteristic of her generous spirit. Stanwyck's talent extended to radio as well, where she reprised her role as Leona Stevenson in the Lux Radio Theater adaptation of Sorry, Wrong Number alongside Burt Lancaster, showcasing her versatility as an actress across different mediums. Barbara Stanwyck, known for her strong screen presence, left the world in a manner that reflected her unique character. After her passing, she was cremated, and in a tribute to her work in Western films, her ashes were scattered over Lone Pine, California. In her film East Side, West Side, she portrayed Jessie Bourne, and interestingly, Gail Sondergaard, who played her mother, was only eight years her senior. Another notable role was Elizabeth Lane in Christmas in Connecticut, which she took over from Bette Davis in April 1944, bringing her own charm to the character. Barbara Stanwyck's presence in film was marked by her family ties and assertive nature. Her brother, Malcolm Byron Stevens, took a role alongside her in the file on Thelma Jordan, appearing as a courtroom defense aide. In The Strange Love of Martha Ivers, she portrayed Martha Ivers and was known for her hands-on approach to her appearance on screen, ensuring she was never overshadowed. She even warned her co-star Van Heflin against performing a distracting coin trick during her lines, demonstrating her point by boldly adjusting her garter, a move that ensured her performance remained the focus. Her commanding performances earned her recognition as one of the greats, with Entertainment Weekly naming her the 40th greatest movie star. Barbara Stanwyck's talent and screen presence earned her the spotlight as Turner Classic Movies Star of the Month in December 2012. Her role as Megan in The Bitter Tea of General Yen showcased her acting skills. Following the completion of this film, she and Frank Fay welcomed their son, Dion Anthony Fay, into their family. Her lasting influence in cinema is reflected by her image gracing the cover of the Electro Swing Revolution Ball, 4 CD, which was released on October 4, 2013. Barbara Stanwyck's portrayal of Julia Sturges in the film Titanic was a role that deeply moved her. During the filming, she experienced the terror of the disaster firsthand. High above the churning water, surrounded by the chaos of lifeboats, she felt the weight of the historical tragedy they were depicting. This moment brought her to tears, connecting her to the real people who face such horrors. Ruby Catherine Stevens, known to the world as Barbara Stanwyck, had a challenging start in life. Born to Byron and Catherine Stevens, she was the youngest of five siblings. After the loss of their mother and abandonment by their father, Ruby and her siblings were left to fend for themselves, with her sisters stepping in to raise her. In Italy, where her films were well received, Stanwyck's voice was primarily provided by Lydia Simonski. Her voice was an important part of her Italian persona, with other actresses like Tina Latenzi and Marcella Rovna also contributing. However, it was Andrena Pagnani's unique voice that brought Stanwyck's character Leona Stevenson to life in Sorry Wrong Number, marking a singular collaboration in her career.